Okay, coming to line types. So that's a property of a line. Okay. So we have. So what you do is uh, again make sure that the menu bar is selected. So I find that really useful. So from the menu bar, you can go to format because now you want to add. So within the AutoCAD library, you would find uh, there's all the existing line types are there, but only thing you have to do is load it from the library, right? So you click on line type because you are formatting something. So by default, there's only the continuous line type, right? So the ones which we have been drawing so far, it's a continuous line, okay, or it's a solid line. So from here, you have to load hidden lines as well as center lines. So the one we are using in uh, MM101, okay, so we look for center. So it should say center X2, okay, or center by two, X means by. So center X2, so that's the appropriate one to use when it comes to center lines. So you click okay, now it's loaded, right? And the other one to load is hidden. So similarly, you look for hidden, so it would say, and then there are many other types of lines, okay? So uh, hidden line, it should say hidden X2, right? Below hidden, you'd see the hot water supply. So if you read a house plan, sometimes it's a hot, hot water line, they use that particular symbol for hot water, right? Okay, so hidden, it should say hidden X2. And there you are. Now these lines are available. So if you have, let's say if you have an existing shape in uh, AutoCAD, so the line, so for that particular line, you can assign a property. Click on it, click on properties. The one at the top is for line weight. And now you can make it as a center line, okay? If you look, zoom in. So it will look more appropriate after you set up the page, right? So that's how you uh, make or turn a line into a center line. If you want to change it as a hidden line, so that's a hidden line, right? So that is line types. As I was explaining, that match properties is applying the property of one object to multiple others. Okay, if you are if you are a draft person, then you'd be having multiple drawings. Okay, and a lot of minor, minor, small details. So let's say, for example, they are in my case, I have four circles. So I select one, and I would like to change its line weight, perhaps. So I can go to its property and change the line weight and let's make it something else. Okay, that's 0 0.6. Okay, why isn't it displaying? Because the button is off. So once I turn it on, now I have assigned a property to that object. That property being I have increased its line weight. So let's assume I have hundreds of circle. So, okay, I won't be selecting each one and then trying to go to property and then go and select 0 0.6. So I have selected one. I can apply it to multiple, right, by using match properties. So match property is somewhere as part of modify, I suppose. Yeah, match properties is here. So the only thing it will ask you is select the source object. So I have a line weight of 0 0.6. So I would like to apply it to multiple others. So that's my source object. Now select destination object. So I would like to apply it here. Okay, so the three other circles. So that's how match properties work. It's just matching properties. That's it. The property here being line weight. Line type is another property. Okay, so I can apply it to any objects, right? So I can increase the line weight here as well. Right. So that's how match properties work. Okay, so it's quite handy to have. So probably I'll turn off line weights. So that's match properties. And what's next? Now uh, you have line type. I have shown you how to load line types and which are the ones we are using. So once again, going to format and line type. So for center, make sure it's center X2, right? If you think you'll forget next week, make a note of it. If it's center line, it's center X2. If it's hidden lines, which you need to use, it's hidden X2. So load the appropriate one from the AutoCAD library, got it. The other ones as, as and when you need them, so you can load them up yourself, right, from the library. So that's about line weight, I mean, it's a line type. So dimensions, how to do uh, angular dimensions, how to do radial dimensions. 
how to dimension diameters. We have covered that last week. So I shall not be going over it again. Now, the other two important things I'd like to touch on is dimension break and dimension space. So uh, let me ask you a question. If uh, I like to dimension this side, okay, let's say the top edge, okay, or the horizontal surface. So if I'd like to dimension that, what should be the space between the object and the dimension line? How, how much should be the gap? Right, so what I mean by that is if I dimension here, if I dimension a line, so it says specify the first point of the extension line. So uh, object snap is on, off, so I've turned it on. So I select that. Specify the second point of the extension line. So there you go. Now from here, this is what I was talking about, the spacing between the object and the dimension line. That is supposed to be 15. One five. Right, so I'll just type in 15. So if I've done it correctly, you would see I can dimension the dimension itself. See, so that is 15. Now everything, all your drawing should look neat, sorry. You're not going to submit it anyhow, okay? Based on whatever you feel is right. Got it. So that's 15. Now the next one, let's assume, or let's say I would like to dimension that smaller square within the larger square itself. So once again, I'm doing a linear dimension. Now, obviously you now know it's supposed to be 30, isn't it? Because that 100 dimension is 15 from the object. So this 50 should be, if it's, if it's above that 100, so it should be 30. So let's say we did not know, or okay, we just put it somewhere here. Now this is where you use dimension space. Okay, because you want your dimension, dimensioning to be equally spaced apart, right? Your dimension line, I suppose. Okay. So uh, you can go to dimension and now dimension space, it only works you have if you have existing dimensions within your drawing. So I look for dimension space. So it will ask me select the base dimension. So which one you think should be the base dimension? 100 or 50? So which one I'm trying to space out? 50 or 100? 50, yes, because 50 is very close to 100, isn't it? So select the base dimension. My base dimension would be 100 or 50? It will be 100, okay? So my base dimension will be 100. And then it says select the dimension to space, okay? See, this is my habit, which you will pick up slowly. Always make a habit of reading the command, right? So it will guide you step by step. So dimension to space is 50. Then it says enter a value, or would you like AutoCAD to space it out automatically for you? Okay, so we are using a value of 15, right? Thank you. So enter a value. Here we will enter 15, one five. Then you press enter. Now you see it's evenly spaced out. So that's how dimension, uh, dimensioning space works. Okay, if you'd like to check, you can just see. So you see the spacing between that 100 dimension line and that 50 dimension line is 15, exactly. Okay. Now you see what is happening here uh, in the case of that hundred. So uh, if you are assuming, I mean, if you are thinking, what is the marker supposed to do when he or she is grading our lab? Okay, so these are the things he or she will check for. That the extension line which you see is passing over hundred, so there should be a gap between the two. Why do you think there needs to be a gap between the text? You see that extension line for that fifty dimension is crossing over hundred. What could be the practical reason for having a break? So the extension line is not supposed to cross over the dimension or the text for the dimension. What's the reason for that? Give me a practical reason. Why? What's the reason? I know it's for neatness, but what's another? And that's why I said practical reason. What's the practical reason that the extension line should not cross over the dimension line or the dimension, sorry, in this case? 
So you see a line crossing over the zero digit. And your drawings will never be this simple. Okay. If you are doing any engineering drawing, it will never be this simple. You'll have multiple lines going over one another. Right. And when it comes to dimensioning, why is it important that your dimension needs to be really clear for anyone who, who is reading it? What if someone assume that, assumes that that zero is crossed off because of that extension line and that dimension is 10 instead of 100, okay? So there could be problems while measuring out and drawing, isn't it? Or when fabricating something. Let's say if somebody assumed that it is a thousand or it's 1,100, okay, be, instead of 100 because yes. that extension line is crossing. So you need a break between dimensions. So it, that's where we introduce something called a dimension break. Okay, so again, go to dimension and look for dimension break. And it says here, select the dimension to break. So which dimension are we going to break? 100 or 50? Let me just zoom out. 100 or 50, which one are we breaking? 50, exactly, right. So let's select that. And then AutoCAD asks me, select the object to break, okay. Now you can do this automatically. So if you click on auto, you'll see that, see there's a break. Now if I zoom in really close, okay, the extension line, now it's breaking apart in two places, okay? So it's not crossing over the text. Or you could do that manually, right? Let me just undo this. Try out again. So dimension, go to dimension break. Select dimension to add or remove or break. So there you go. So if I click manual this time instead of auto, so it will ask me to specify breakpoints. Okay, so I can click here and it says specify the second breakpoint. Now you see, now a break is created for that extension line, which holds the 50 dimension. So that's how you have a dimension break. Okay. And the last thing which is covered in lab number three is uh, after dimension break, you'll see that it talks about multi-leader. Okay. So now again, for clarity and not to really congest or to cram up your drawings, See, I have four circles. Now uh, it will be wise not to dimension all the four circles because number one, they all have the same measurements. Okay, all the four circles have a diameter of 20. So why don't you just dimension one of those and say that there are four circles with each having a diameter of 20 or whatever it is, right? So that is, that is where you can use multi-leaders. Again, for multi-leaders, you can format them. So if there's anything in AutoCAD you'd like to format, so you just go and click on format. This time the multi-leader. Okay, uh, similar to how you uh, format the dimension, isn't it? So you can create a new one, give it a name, and then there's not much to change here, only the arrowhead size, okay, in my case. So the arrowhead size we are using is three. You click on that, okay, now that is set. So now I can have a multi-leader, okay? Now the multi-leader is, not a dim I mean, it does not dimension automatically. So I need to know, in my case, I know that the diameter of the circle is 20. Okay, so multi-leader multi is just used to point that out. Okay. So I click on dimension and look for multi-leader. And then it says, specify the leader. Or in this case, for that leader, you specify where the arrowhead is supposed to be, or the location of the arrowhead. Okay, so in this case, I want the arrowhead to be here. So maybe I'll just turn off ortho. Then it says specify the leader landing location. So that's my multi-leader. I have started it off now. So the arrow is pointing to the circle itself. I'll specify a second point. And from here, you can start typing your text. You see, you need to type in it. So I have four circles, four by, and the next thing, so as soon as you execute the multi-leader command, you'll see a new dashboard opens up, right? Which is dedicated for multi-leaders. So from here, you can insert a symbol. 
So we look for the symbol for the diameter. So it's four by diameter twenty. And then you go out of that. So now I have a multiliter which is indicating. So you can interpret your or you can read my drawing now, isn't it? So that there are four circles and the diameter is twenty. So I don't have to individually dimension each and every circle. Okay. So then you can always click on it and modify its property, right? So depending on how you're required to have it. So in my case, it's left attachment, so it should be. So that looks more appropriate in my case, okay? So in your lab handouts, you will be given how the multiliter should look like. Okay. Now, if you'd like to ever modify any property of a object, all you need to do is do a right click and then modify it. So that's how you work with multiliter.